The United States Air Force's Collaborative Combat Aircraft, CCA, initiative is set to transform the future of air superiority, potentially becoming a foundational element of modern warfare. At the heart of this initiative are semi-autonomous, AI-enabled drones designed to collaborate with manned aircraft, performing critical roles such as air-to-air -air combat, air-to-ground strikes, electronic warfare, intelligence gathering, and more. However, while the focus has largely been on the CCA concept itself, one important aspect has received relatively little attention, the need for new, smaller, and more efficient air-to-air -air weapons tailored for these platforms. The CCA program envisions a future where drones will act as loyal wingmen, flying alongside manned aircraft like the F-22, F-35, and potentially future sixth-generation fighters. These drones will not only extend the reach of sensors and provide situational awareness, but they could also carry out offensive missions and even sacrifice themselves to protect human pilots. This is a game changer in the world of military aviation. The goal is to create a formation where one manned aircraft is surrounded by multiple drones, all of which are capable of conducting their own missions. Air Force Secretary Frank Kendall has stated that the service plans to acquire at least 1,000 CCA drones in the coming years at an estimated cost of $25 to $30 million per unit. While this seems more affordable than manned fighters like the F-35, it still poses significant financial challenges, especially when considering the production and maintenance of the drones over time. Despite the re-evaluation of the Next Generation Air Dominance NGAD fighter program, the Air Force remains committed to the CCA concept. The challenge now is how to make this vision a reality while managing costs and production efficiency. A major hurdle in making CCAs viable is their reliance on outdated air-to-air -air missile designs, specifically the AIM-120 AMROM, Advanced Medium Range Air-to-Air -air Missile, and its upcoming replacement, the AIM-260 Joint Advanced Tactical Missile. These missiles, originally designed for manned fighter aircraft, are large, heavy, and occupy a significant amount of space. While the AIM-120 has undergone numerous upgrades since its introduction in 1991, its external dimensions remain virtually unchanged. This is problematic because larger missiles require larger drones to carry them, which in turn drives up costs, weight, and complexity. The AIM-120 and AIM-260 were designed to fit inside the internal weapons bays of stealth fighters like the F-22 and F-35, both of which were built around the dimensions of the Sparrow missile, first introduced in the 1950s. These long-standing form factors are not ideal for the smaller, more agile CCA drones the Air Force envisions. To truly unlock the potential of CCAs, smaller, more efficient air-to-air -air weapons are needed. Fortunately, both Lockheed Martin and Raytheon, now RTX, have been developing smaller, more advanced air-to-air -air missiles that could meet the needs of the CCA program. Lockheed Martin's CUDA missile, for example, is about half the size of the AIM-120 but is said to offer similar or even better range and performance. The CUDA uses hit-to-kill technology, allowing it to engage targets with direct impact rather than relying on traditional warheads, which reduces weight and size. Raytheon's Peregrine missile is another promising option. Slightly larger than the CUDA but still much smaller than the AIM-120, the Peregrine is designed to have a range comparable to modern AMROMs while also being highly maneuverable thanks to thrust vectoring technology. Both of these missiles could allow CCA drones to carry a larger payload of air-to-air -air weapons without the need for oversized airframes. Implications for CCA development The development of smaller, more efficient air-to-air -air missiles could have a profound impact on the CCA program. By reducing the size and weight of the weapons payload, drone designers would have more flexibility in terms of airframe size, range, and endurance. Smaller weapons bays would allow for more streamlined designs, reducing the overall weight of the aircraft, which in turn would lower production and operational costs. For example, the Mitchell Institute of Aerospace Studies recently conducted war games simulating U.S. intervention in a Chinese invasion of Taiwan. The results highlighted the need for two types of air-to-air -air drones. Smaller, more expendable models for high-intensity conflict in the early stages and larger, more capable drones for sustained air superiority missions. Both types of drones would benefit from miniaturized air-to-air -air missiles, which would allow them to carry more weapons while maintaining a smaller, more affordable design. Challenges and the path forward. While the potential benefits of miniaturized missiles are clear, 
there are still challenges to overcome. Developing new missile technologies is expensive and time-consuming, and integrating these weapons into existing platforms will require significant testing and modification. Furthermore, the Air Force will need to strike a delicate balance between capability and affordability, ensuring that the CCA program remains within budget while still delivering the advanced capabilities needed for future air superiority. Nonetheless, the development of miniaturized air-to-air -air weapons offers a promising solution to one of the CCA program's biggest challenges. By leveraging new technologies and missile design, the Air Force can reduce the size and weight of CCA drones, making them more affordable and more effective in combat. As the U.S. military continues to adapt to the changing nature of warfare, the CCA program and its associated technologies will likely play a pivotal role in maintaining air superiority in the decades to come.